Robert Wayne Collins has more moves than a Swiss watch. The 80-year-old is Australia's oldest fraudster. He spent a lifetime taking other people's money and living the high life. Now the scammers out of jail once again. If there is a devil, I'm certain he's a prodigal son. He has a devious charm and rat cunning of a dirty, rotten scoundrel. I don't know why he was released, how he was released. A so-called man of God. Yeah, the service was filled with the Holy Spirit today. But his heart is filled with sin. So now you can squeeze the clock. Robert Wayne Collins, 80 years of age, ripping people off since 1973. A criminal history stretching close to 50 years. 18 of them spent behind bars. The question now, why is he free once again? How do you feel about the fact that Robert Wayne Collins is no longer behind bars? Well, Dan, honestly, I'm shocked, quite shocked. Colin Preston is one of seven victims in Robert Collins' latest scam that netted $386,000. The serial con man tricked them into investing in New York property as part of a group. Instead, Collins and his wife, Veronica Moore, used the money to buy two Mercedes-Benz cars, holidays, and to pay a lump sum off their mortgage. We were conned, we were dragged into it, we were sold, quite professionally, quite, quite remarkably, this story that, that he has all these contacts, he has all these business. To give the scam a hint of authority, Collins sent fake emails purporting to include former US Secretary of State John Kerry as a fellow investor, along with a Saudi Arabian prince who had a cute nickname for this rotten old fraudster. Good day to our friend Rob, known as Captain Kangaroo to us. How much did those type of stories make you feel like it was a solid investment? Well, they're quite impressive, you know, and he sold it quite well. He's a professional. You know, he's been doing this 50 years. We're at amateurs. We're, we're, you know, we're just trying to make a dollar and, and, and improve our lives. Colin Preston got a chance to confront Collins himself outside court. No, no. Excuse me. On Judgment Day in 2020, a jury took just three hours to find him guilty on all seven counts of financial deception a judge dispatching him to prison for a minimum of four years with these scathing comments. I find you have no prospects of rehabilitation. There is not a drop of confidence that you will depart from this type of dishonest activity ever. It just shows that somebody who's been in and out of jail for almost five decades is a person that clearly cannot be rehabilitated. Lawyer Andrew Carpenter represents that group of victims who are still trying to claw their money back via a civil claim, so far receiving less than $3,000 each. He caused people to lose their homes, lose their jobs uh, and their relationships, all because of his selfish offending that was uh, really created for his own personal gain. His victims felt four years in jail was nowhere near enough for their suffering, but it turns out Collins didn't even serve that. I thought that was like, that's the minimum. You can't get out before that time. I almost fell off my chair when I received an email from him some 18 months into a four-year non-parole period. Yep, this career fraudster was released on home detention after serving just 18 months of his sentence. Released to the same home where he committed most of his previous offences via a home computer. He's even now posting heartwarming memes like these on his social media account. I've spoken to two people who visited Robert Collins here at his home in Adelaide's southern suburbs where he was working as a bookkeeper. They had no idea he was actually on home detention as he confidently carried himself off as a financial whiz. Robert Collins must wear an electronic monitoring bracelet 24-7 but declined to explain to us why he should be free. Rob, could you just explain to us why you're not a risk to the community given your horrific track record? 47 years of fraud, it's got to be some sort of record, hasn't it? South Australia's Department for Correctional Services wouldn't comment on Collins' specific case, but said home detention decisions were decided by a committee 
which considered risk assessments, prior offending history and victim considerations. Well, how? How? Because no one's consulted. Nobody tell, tell us, so we don't know anything. We don't even know it's been released. You can rob a servo with a knife and get real jail time. Do it with a pen and a devious smile and you get a slap on the wrist. South Australian politician Frank Pangello can't believe a criminal this bad could secure an early release. Well, look, it's outrageous. While Rob Collins is allowed to wander the streets, nobody is safe from him. The best place for him, behind bars. Frank Pangello covered many of Robert Collins' crimes in his former role as a Today Tonight journalist. His most famous sting, catching Collins and wife Veronica attempting to scam $6 million from Adelaide businessman Nick Bianco. This is harassment. No, it's not. Harassment. Yes, it is. This is fraud, attempted no, fraud, deception. Not. No, it is not. You're fraudsters. Veronica Moore's criminal charges over Collins' latest fraud were eventually dropped, but in a civil suit, both were found liable for misleading and deceptive conduct. She approached us the day we were filming, once again, alleging media harassment. Why doesn't Rob come out and talk to us? I don't want Rob to. This is my house and my property. Who owns... I'm being harassed. Who owns the cars? I own my car. Who owns the big rig? They're second hand. They're second hand vehicles. We've had everything taken from us. Robert Collins and wife Veronica Moore both filed for bankruptcy, but their home in Hackham survived thanks to a timely lump sum payment from a company called Duggan Co, of which they had both been previous directors. Rob seems to be doing okay for a discharged bankrupt and fraudster. I don't want to hear this accusation. It's not an accusation. It's a terrible accusation. He's Australia's oldest fraudster, it's a fact. Well, he might be old. 47 years of fraud. No, 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 no. 47 no, no. years. This is my home, my property. Sure, but don't try and tell me lies. Don't try to tell me lies. I'm astounded that Veronica Moore uh, hasn't been roped in in this as well. She's be been part again. of those scams that he's pulled off. The judge was scathing with what he had to say this about him. This is harassment. And I it's know not exactly harassment at all. You came and approached me. She sat next to her husband while he was spinning these web of lies, knowing them to be untrue. Her husband's not a billionaire, he lives in Hackham. In recent months, the latest chapter of this sorry case played out as South Australian police raided Colin's home, seizing computers and hard drives. It's part of a fresh inquiry into Australia's oldest fraudster. Despite his previous convictions and bankruptcy, ASIC searches still list him as a company director for Doug & Co. A form to change company details was lodged in his name as director with ASIC last year. I don't know how he's out, um, but if anyone comes across Robert Wayne Collins and Veronica Mohor, run. Do you have any compassion at all for the victims of your husband's offending over the past well, 47 I've years? I've never such a group of people lie so hard in my life. He's been in jail more times than I've had hot breakfasts. That's great. Enjoy it. Because I'm not religious, but if he's religious, doesn't realise there could be a day of reckoning that he's going to go to heaven or hell. 